from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The library has a new hashtag called LC Pride. That's because we're holding a very special event in Pride Month 2017. We've brought out almost 200 items from the collections. Rich, diverse resources in every format of information you could think of. From braille books and talking books, to rare books and manuscripts. It's all about the American experience and community with all the international connections. Some of the famous names you might have heard of, well, there's Walt Whitman, Leonard Bernstein, Aaron Copeland. And then, of course, there are the many people you may never have heard of, but will really enjoy coming and looking at the material and learning and hearing their stories. This is the Sunday Dispatch from March and April of 1852. And the importance of it is the fact that The Adventures of Jack Engel is a serialized story that was actually written by Walt Whitman, even though it wasn't attributed to him in this Sunday Dispatch. Published on the front page, the first three or four columns of every um, front page. And we are the only ones in the country that has a complete set of these issues. And I've got in front of me some selections from our artist book and fine press collection. These books represent contributions by lesbians, gay men, transsexuals, who use the book arts form as a way of expressing their experience or their struggles. We have everything from Jean Cocteau in the 1930s up to books that relate the experience of HIV and the, and the death from AIDS to the 14 Stations of the Cross. We have a lesbian bicycle rider who talks about her accident with a pop-up book and we have um, a really fascinating uh, book about marriage equality in which the artists ask non-traditional families to go to Sears to have a family portrait taken and then they talk about why their family is just as ordinary as the others that go to Sears. Um, and finally, uh, a recreation of love letters between two men in Far Rockaway at the turn of the century. So these are just a few of the many, many examples of book arts that come from the LGBTQ plus community. I'm very pleased to be sharing with you some of our performing arts collections at the library, which are representative of the entire history of performing arts traditions in Europe, in Asia, around the world, and here at home in the U.S. Uh, within our collections, we have what are called special collections, which might be the papers of a composer or a lyricist or a choreographer, uh, such as Alvin Ailey, whose papers we have through his Foundations collection. We have Leonard Bernstein's papers. Uh, Jonathan Larson, who is the composer and lyricist for the hit musical Rent, which is uh, celebrating its 20th anniversary of its national tour this year. These items showcase uh, not only the importance of LGBTQ creators in the U.S. and around the world, but also the stories of the LGBTQ community as told by everyone in society. So, for example, Rent was one of the first uh, mainstream musicals to address the LGBTQ and the HIV-AIDS experiences in a very public and significant manner, and we're still learning from that representation today. Hi, I'm David Pelizzeri from the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically ha Handicapped. This is the section of the Library of Congress that offers reading materials in many formats for people facing visual problems or other physical impairments that prevent them from using books normally. So, for example, here is a talking book player that is proprietary to the Library of Congress. Here is a flash drive that looks a little bit like an old cassette, but it's not. It's a flash drive. And this contains a talking book. The book in question is Queer, the Ultimate LGBT Guide for Teens, and we have lots of materials that serve the Pride community, and we are proud of them. Let me show you one more thing, which is actually kind of remarkable. This is a book that is printed in dual format. You can see that it sort of looks like a regular children's book, but between the pages are braille, transparent braille sheets that are brailled on both sides. This way a family or a group of people, some of whom 
use Braille, some of whom use books normally, can share the book together and read the book together. This particular book, I Am Jazz, is sort of a mini autobiography of Jazz, a transgender kid who's now a star on MTV. So we produce about 25 of these dual format books every year and we've got it so happens that within this coming year we're going to have another book related to topics of interest to the transgender community it's called introducing teddy uh, we're very proud of a product like this about 1990-91 i suggested to the library of congress professional association that we do an aids quilt because by that time i knew of other names and they jumped at the chance and they said, would I agree to co-chair with one of their office hol holders, the late Phil DeSellum? And that's how the quilt came about. We put together a committee of the most marvelous people, the most driven people you'll ever have known. The only guidance we gave to begin with is that Phil and I decided that we would like the dome on the quilt uh, and the names and one other principle we established that we would include no name unless there was a written source that they had succumbed to AIDS or their family agreed. So you will see many names up there sine nomine without names because we could not meet that criterion. So this quilt was fabricated here at the library in a variety of conference rooms. Uh, we brought in sewing machines, ironing boards and irons, and, and then we took different parts of it home. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that the names are actually constructed in strips um, because a number of different people wanted to sew down the name of a person that they might have known, and then we sewed all the strips together. It was on the mall in 1993. Three. We actually made it in 1992. It was supposed to be displayed for one day when we unveiled it outside the, uh, in the Mumford Room. It was on a riser uh, outside in the foyer of the Mumford Room. Dr. Billington came by and was so moved by it, he directed that it be hung on a wall and displayed for at least a month so that everyone could see it. It's an honor to see it again after 25 years. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.